background patterns for pirates and I'm going to be sewing up a sunflower swim top with you today. This one is going to be my size. I am a medium, um, 5'10", so I add a little length to it. Um, and I grade it down to a small in some spots. I am fully lining my top. I have the higher straight neckline. My main fabric is this pink with palm trees. It has a white wrong side, so you'll be able to see the right and wrong side really easily. So I have my front piece in both my main and my lining. My lining is just this plain beige. My back pieces again, I have my main and my lining. I um, grabbed green for my straps. And then I'm also going to be doing the shelf bra option. I chose to do an inner lining. If you want removable cups, you must do an inner lining. I used um, power mesh for my inner lining and then this beige is going to be my regular lining. So as you can see, I cut my regular lining piece on the removable cups option and then my inner lining is the full shelf bra. Other things I'm going to need are some swim elastic. For the adult, you're going to need quarter inch swim elastic, three eighths swim elastic, and if you're doing the shelf bra, I recommend three quarters inch swim elastic. Swim elastic, sorry. Um, I think that's it. Let's get started. Okay, here we are now. I have my straps and I have my elastic that are the exact same length as my straps. And we're going to sew them all in one go here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my straps in half and then right sides together. And I'm going to base them along the raw edges. Okay, so I have basted my straps folded in half. Now I'm going to grab my elastic that's the exact same length as this. I'm just going to align it to those same edges that I basted. As you can see, it is right in half, so once it's once it's folded, it'll take up the whole thing. And I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance on these, so I'm going to disengage my blade. I'm not going to be trimming anything off if I'm using a serger. Um, a little trick on the serger, if you have a hard time getting things to take off just so, is you can stick a pin in, stick it all the way under, and put your needles down. And so you have that edge exactly where you want it before it takes off. I'm not going to be stretching the elastic at all. It should be the exact same length as your straps. If you're worried about stretching it, you can pin it at the bottom and maybe again in the middle to make sure you're not stretching or easing it in in any way. The elastic is really important in the straps. I highly advise not to skip putting elastic in your straps. It helps keep it on your shoulders, especially when wet and running around. Also helps you be able to tie it more securely and um, support your bust area. Okay, now that we have attached our elastic as we did our final stitch, what we're going to do is flip this right side out. You can use your favorite turning tool. Mine happens to be a regular old safety pin. So I'm just going to push it through one little part of the strap. And then I'm going to slide the safety pin inside 
and it takes a tiny bit of finessing at the very beginning to get it to flip inwards. And once you've done that, it should be pretty smooth sailing. Okay, we're all through. Your seam should kind of naturally go to the back. And if you want to pop all those basting stitches now, I prefer to pop my basting stitches and you can actually remove them if you want to remove them before you put in your, you can do it before you switch. So like I've done my final stitch here. You can remove your basting stitches if you don't want to have them in there. I usually forget about them like I did with the first one and then hear them pop and think, oh yeah, forgot those basting stitches. But um, you do want to pop them before you put it on so that when you put on your swimsuit for the first time you don't hear all the basting stitches pop and go, oh no! Because that can be a scary sound when you've sewn something. So there we go. Now my basting stitches have been removed before I turn it. I'm going to turn this one and then we'll jump back in. Here's my front main piece. I'm going to grab my two back pieces and I'm going to sew them together at the side seams. Then I'm going to repeat that with my lining pieces. I'm going to baste my shelf bra pieces together since I am interlining. So I'm just going to baste these around the edges on my sewing machine. So I'm just marking the center of my shelf bra to align with the center of my fabric pieces. And I'm just going to serge this on with a quarter inch seam allowance and then flip it down. You can top stitch it. I actually often top stitch. Just to make sure it's nice and flat and smooth. Again, you can top this top stitch the seam if you'd like. I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I top stitched with a triple step zigzag, which is my favorite for something that needs a lot of stretch. I'm gonna grab my so now we're gonna sew our lining pieces together at the side seams if you're doing a shelf bra then you're going to stitch your elastic on. I've top stitched it. I also chose to interline. So I have um, power mesh in the full lining and then I have the regular lining cut to have the removable cups. So I'm just going to place this on both right sides up. Okay, so I just have it pinned and then I'm going to be putting my back pieces on the side seams and stitching them up.
Here we go. And I'm just going to repeat on the other side. Swimsuit. For the open back, we are only basting the straps in the front and then they will lace up the back. So I'm going to grab each of my straps and baste it a quarter of an inch away from Excuse my middle one. I'm not happy about something. <sighs> a quarter of an inch away from this edge. And that is because we will have a seam here. And we need that quarter of an inch to sew that seam there. I'm going to baste this with my machine. I like to baste it about an eighth of an inch away, right at the very edge. And then again, a little bit lower where um, the little bit lower one I will have to pull out after I sew it. I think that keeps it nice and straight. Since we line this, it's really hard to see exactly where the strap is when you're sewing. And I don't want it to get turned sideways and not be coming straight out of the top of this. As you can see, it only takes a few seconds to do that. So again, I like to baste it really close to the edge, really close to the edge, and then again a little bit lower. My seam allowance will be somewhere about here. So I'll have to pull this basting stitch once I have sewn it, but this keeps it nice and straight while I am sewing it. For the next couple of steps, you really just kind of want to get these straps out of the way. Sometimes I kind of tie them in a little bow like that to kind of bunch them up and keep them together out of the way. Now I'm going to grab my lining and I'm going to put it right sides together and I'm going to pin around all the edges and then I'm also going to baste around all the edges um, except for the bottom. You are also going to be pinning and basting all around the sides as well. So I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll be back. All right, here we are with all of our pieces basted together around all the edges besides the bottom. I have black thread, so you should be able to see my basting stitches really easily. What we're going to be doing is adding in elastic on all of our edges. As you can see, I left these little end pieces open. You want to add your elastic onto your main fabric, not your lining. This will help it flip out um, beautiful and keep the lining from flipping to the front side. So we're going to be taking quarter inch seam allowances here as we attach the quarter inch elastic. So you want the elastic all the way up against the edge and you want your seam to pretty much cover the entire elastic. We're not going to be stretching our elastic as we attach. We are just going to be letting it take in by the machine with the um, swim fabric. So I'm going to continue doing that on these back loops and then across the arm side and across the top. All exactly the same, not stretching anywhere. You can see as I do these curvy parts, all you want to do is take your swim and kind of make it straight into the machine. And 
that will be the easiest way. It kind of looks like it's gathering the swim elastic when you're doing it, but um, where the seam allowance is, there should not be any gathers. You're just straightening out your fabric as it feeds into the machine. That's all you're doing. So now I'm going across the top back and the arm side. Exactly the same with quarter inch seam allowance, not stretching. Aligning all these edges. For these top pieces, I find it easier to cut them a little bit longer so I have something to hold. And make sure that it doesn't get off. And then I just trim it off. I'm going to go across the top now. You can do your elastic butted up all the way against and um, overlap or up against, or you can go out here to where the strap is if you're nervous about it being bulky. I've actually tried it all the different ways, and I don't think it makes a huge difference any way if I'm perfectly honest. It's a little bulkier right there if you overlap it here. It's also a little bit more stable there. So like for women who want to so like for adults who might want to pull the straps tight to help support their bust it might be worth having the extra bulk there to have the elastic on the strap. If I'm perfectly honest again, I really couldn't tell a difference if I brought the elastic all the way out or to the straps or I, I just could not tell a big difference. It's whatever you feel most comfortable doing right here. I do not think it makes a major difference if you don't if you really don't want the bulk, don't do it. Add your elastic on between the inside of the straps and have that little gap there. If you really like the stability and you don't want the section without the elastic, overlap it and you'll be good to go. to watch me do these little curves one more time. Okay, all I'm going to do is take my swim and kind of make sure it's feeding it in. doing a teeny tiny baby size they only have um, one loop because they're I think they're so short they really couldn't fit the three loops they just have two So let's take a look at it now. We have elastic on all our edges, except for the bottom now. I'm just going to go back and trim just a few of these. Oops. Surge your tails. 
well really just that one. I'm going to go ahead and remove this basting stitch now. There we go. And flip it inside up. Flip it right sides out, excuse me. To get these little loops on the back, I usually grab my little bamboo. Um, I'm not sure what this is called. Stick. <laughs> to um poke these out because they're kind of narrow. Okay, give it another little shake. You can top stitch your swimsuit if you would like. I usually don't, but every once in a while I you might want to. You want to make sure it's a very stretchy stitch. Um, one that I often use is a triple step zigzag. All I'm doing right now too is I'm popping my basting stitches. If you want to pull all your basting stitches, you can. Right after you attach the elastic, you can pull them all out. If I'm honest, I usually leave mine in there. But I do like to pop all my basting stitches because when I put it on, I don't want to hear the basting stitches pop. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're getting there. It's almost done. So you can baste these together. I'm going to baste mine together along the bottom. Then we're going to attach an elastic and hem it up. Okay, here we are. I've basted along the bottom edge. We're going to attach our elastic to the edge using a quarter inch seam allowance again. This time we're just going to do it to the wrong side. We're not lining it. Could line it if you like the look of that better. You just have to leave an opening to turn it out. There we go. Now I'm going to move you over to my sewing machine so that we can hem our bottom under. I'm going to be using the triple step zigzag, which is my favorite for super stretchy things. Going to just be turning the seam allowance under the quarter inch. And I'm going to put some pins all throughout. That's because the elastic is a lot more stable than the swim knit, and sometimes it's easy to accidentally ease it in. The adult bodice also curves a little bit along the bottom, so it's always good to put pins in along curves and make sure you aren't stretching or easing it in. This little section gets pretty small. It should be about the same as this one. Don't worry about it getting looking really small. I am going to be stitching from the top side and that's because I have pink in the top and black in the bottom. And you know what? I, I forgot that. I put my pins on the wrong side. So I'm going to have to switch my pins as I'm sewing. You can stitch from the other side, of course, as long as you're happy with your bobbin thread showing. You can also use a cover stitch machine if you have one.
Okay, so we're all hemmed up along the bottom. You can remove your basting stitch. Now all we have left are our little loops. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn it under half an inch. I'm sorry, about three quarters of an inch. And we are going to close it just on that very edge. So I'm just gonna trim mine up. Make sure they're nice and even. I had a little elastic on that one that I had not trimmed yet. And my basting stitches. <laughs> okay, before I stitch it, I'm just going to kind of finger press it out. Make sure it's nice and even there is a little bit of room between your quarter inch elastics. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it back about three quarters of an inch. And I'm just gonna use a straight stitch here because um, this seam really doesn't need to stretch right here. There we go, and I'm just going to continue down my little loops. And again, I'm going to finger press it out, fold it back. Basting stitch out right there. I'm actually going to just move on to the other side without removing my stuff yet. So I'm going to trim up just like I did on the other side, trim all these little serger tails. But you can stitch it down first and then trim your serger tail, whichever you're most comfortable with. Fold it back at three quarters of an inch. And these are just creating the little loops that you're going to use to lace up the back. to make sure those basting stitches are popped. That's why you see me tugging on it. I like to line them up all like this without cutting my threads because my machine has an easier time moving on to the next one and I can see that they're all very even. So I can measure my first one at three quarters of an inch and then I can just line them all up making sure they're really even with that first one. And then since I backstitched between all of these I can just trim them like this. Now that you've sewn you can go back and trim even tighter here if you like. And we are all done. Here's our little loops. Now we do have to thread these through, so I can show you that. All I do is take a safety pin. Ooh, try not to drop it. Take a safety pin and thread them through. 
It is a tight squeeze. This is folded back three quarters of an inch and this is three eighths so it just barely fits through. If you have sewn a lot of my patterns you know that I really like a tight casing and things. I think it even though it might be harder to thread through and things like that it gives it a nice tight fit after which is super nice. So top, middle, bottom for this side and it's going to be the same on the other side. You can crisscross them here or not, whatever your preference is. If you like a crisscross strap, crisscross them. If you like them to go straight back, I know a lot of people, um, the crisscross kind of hurts their neck or shoulders. So you can just go straight back if you want, if you prefer that. Or maybe just change it up to not have the same tan line. <laughs> I'm just going to repeat on the opposite side. There we go. Doesn't take too long to thread them through. There we go. To finish off the ends, there's a couple different ways you can finish off the ends of your straps. You can tie it in a knot. You can fold it inside itself like this and stitch down. It's usually my preferred method. You can also just fold it under and stitch down. <clears throat> Any of those ways will give you a nice finished edge for your strap. And um, then you're all done. You have a complete swim top. I'm going to fold mine under into itself and stitch down, but I'll have to change my thread color, so I won't make you watch me do that. I usually um, like to match my thread color there. I want it to just blend in as much as possible. Alright, I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me this sunflower swim top. It's a super fun swimsuit to sew. The crisscross backs can give you um, a lot of wiggle room on a girl with me style for youth or just fluctuating sizes as an adult or if you tend to have a hard time grading between different sizes and getting the perfect fit. The lace-up back gives you a lot of wiggle room to just tie it as tight or loose as you need it. I hope everybody loves their sunflower swim top. I can't wait to see yours. Don't forget to share with us. We love seeing your finished garments on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you love to share. Thanks!